What's going on everybody, Wayne's Workshop here, and welcome to the first episode of the series How to Build Cosplay Armor. And like the name says, it's a whole series, and the topic of the series, because I need to build something, will be Mechanic Brigitte for my girlfriend. This will be a series from start to finish, and in this first episode, we will cover Armorsmith. So Armorsmith is basically an improved version of Pepakura. If you don't know Pepakura, it's a uh, paper craft program that takes a 3D model and flattens it. So you have a 2D template, which you can then print out, cut out, trace on either foam or just use the paper and build it up into a 3D model again. Now Pepakura is originally designed for paper crafting. Now uh, some cosplayers way way back figured this program out that it would be perfect for use on foam if you just remove the thickness uh, bits of it and let the foam thickness work for you. The program however is somewhat limiting. You can get by fine but this man, Randy Kavanaugh, is a software engineer and he is the developer of Armorsmith. And he liked Pepakura but found it lacking and improved upon the whole thing uh, with the main goal being cosplay in mind. So let's delve right in. I have Blender open here and I already extracted the Mechanic Brigitte model. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video up here on how to get Overwatch's game models. You can extract them, use them for personal use, you know, use them for, well, what I'm going to show you here for cosplay armor. Um, what I did is I already separated the flail, and I'll be using the flail as the subject matter, and I'm going to build that first, and load that in Armorsmith, flatten it out, and then print it, and we can build it up again. Now you can buy Armorsmith over on the armoredgarage.com. I'll have a link down in the description. It is still in its beta phase. Uh, it's still under development. It still has some minor bugs in it, and uh, but there's an upside to it. It's still in its beta phase, so you can get it cheap. It's only $25, and for a piece of software that is this good, uh, that's cheap, and it's worth every penny. So armoredgarage.com, and you can buy it from there. It's constantly updating. Uh, there's a huge Facebook group uh, for support. If you ever find uh, a difficult bug or something works wrong with your model, you can post it in the Facebook group. And usually within the same day, the entire community responded and the developer, Randy, will have responded to you. It goes really fast and it's just the best. Once you've installed Armorsmith and opened it, you're greeted by this. This is your main workspace and your avatar. And the beauty about this whole avatar system is you can customize this body exactly to your own. Just grab a tape measure, um, measure your every body part, and you can fill in the value here. Now let's focus on like, for example, the head. If you really have a big head, you just measure the circumvents and fill it in and you have a really wide head. Do you have a really long head? Hey, you have a really long head. If you're uh, hitting the gym a lot, boom, you can do that. If you wanna be Popeye, well, no problem, you can be Popeye. So you can recreate your own body measurements on this avatar and then load in files, which I'm gonna get to later, uh, and fit them exactly to your body. So you have no more of those sizing issues for Pepakura and, and that you don't know if it will fit, if you have measured it correctly. Once you have your body measured out and you have it like on this, uh, on this avatar here and you, you, know, you have really big underpants, and uh, you gain a little bit of weight, you know, uh, you just fill it in here and then you go to avatar and you can save it and you can just save it like freak of nature, boom. And then it's saved. Now let's say uh, you wanna make your partner or you have a commission and you need their body in here. You just go to new avatar, do the same thing over and save it. And if you wanna come back to your own, just open it up again, freak of nature, and bam, there you are again. Now let's uh, not use this, but use the, 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 the standard one. Uh, 
If you're familiar with Pepakura and you wanted to like increase the size of your model, uh, it only worked in all directions. You could only uh, size it up in all axes, axes. Uh, so that's the Y, Z and the X. You couldn't do one. You couldn't like keep the same height and like really extend it. You had to go, you had certain workarounds where you like split the template and then measured it and all that. This program, you actually can. This program can import raw OBJ files, but also already unfolded uh, Pepakura files. So if I load in a helmet here, I'll go to import. And you can see down here all supported files, PDO, OBJ, and even STLs. And STL is a 3D printer file. So if you have problems sizing up a certain uh, 3D print file, a gun or a helmet or whatever in reference to your body, you can even load it in here, size up, for example, the gun, because it needs to be from height till, I don't know, up till here. You can use your own body measurements, scale up the gun and save it back to an STL and then print it and it will be that exact size. So from way back, I once did this thing. It's from Dead Space 3. It's a John Carver helmet and I just loaded it in. You can see it right here in the screen. You can select it and attach costume part. And you can see it like floating, floating here. And all these cogwheels here are attachment points. It won't, it will just link here, but you can still move it all over the place. But let's look, just link it to the body. Now let's say you have a really wide head you only need one axis where it needs to be either uh, a little bit more narrow or really wide. You right click on the model, go to scale part, and it will be always on uniform, but we don't want it uniform, we want it non-uniform. And now you can select one of the squares and you can see it that it's a darker color. Now let's say I want to really make it wide. You click and hold and it will stretch the whole 3D file. And the beauty about it, and the beauty of it is, if you go to pattern layout, now this was already an unfolded piece, this is the custom, or this is the original helmet with all the uh, unfolded pieces just fine. Go back to costume and do that non-uniform again and make it really wide. I'm over-exaggerating, of course, just to show you. And go back to pattern layout it has extended all those files that needed to be extended to get that so wide. But we're not going to build a Dead Space helmet. We're going to make Mechanic Brigitte. So I'm going to load in my girlfriend's avatar. I already made it. And here you can uh, change the name. And here at gender, you can select male to get a male body type and also female to get a female body type. So now we can load in the flail that I already extracted and separated. And I have them in a OBJ and also in a PDO. I'm first gonna load the OBJ to show you some stuff and how the unfolding process works. Here it says if you wanna make it into a reasonable size, just click yes, otherwise it will get really small. And click attach costume part and just lock it to one of the cogwheels. Select it, hit S. And then you can size it up and press, uh, you can press T for translating. And according to Blender, it comes about to her crotch if it's like on the floor. So now we have our reference and we can size it up in Armorsmith like this. And then we, when we go to pattern layout, it already did a pretty decent job unfolding it. And it works kind of the same way as Pepakura. You right click, you can press translate to move around, rotate to rotate. You can just click a template, then click and hold again, and you can just spin it around. And then the join cut feature, that will be your best friend when uh, you're making this into uh, workable templates. This way you can cut uh, already pre-unfolded files um, into more workable uh, templates for you. And if you don't know uh, how to do basic unfolding, I have a short video on just unfolding. It isn't Pepakura, but in Armorsmith, it works the same way. 
So yeah, this is not really workable and the glue tabs are even still attached there. Now glue tabs like this one here is for if you're using it for paper crafting, that you have to have a tab to like glue the paper edges next to each other, but we're gonna use this for foam. So you have show tabs here and you just check that off and boom, the tabs are gone. I don't want these edge IDs also, so, and they're also gone. Now back to that join cut that was it, that I was talking about. Uh, this will be your, like I said, this will be your best friend for making the templates workable. So if it's a green line and you click, it will separate. If it's a red line, you can see where it goes. So this side goes to that side, and if you, and this side goes to that side, and if you double click it, it will attach. So let's say, let's see which one that is. That is that one. Now let's say we want to make this a little bit more workable and friendly to cut out and trace out over foam. You just cut some of this, just double click that, and we'll separate that. Separate that, and separate that. Boom, boom. Like this. And we'll separate that one, translate, move that aside and focus on just this bit. And you can just start to cut this out and move this. Now see, now it's inside one another. Can't have that. So just let it loose and stick it on there. Now that looks a lot better. Same with this. Stick it on there. See, now it's looking way better already and it looks much more uniform. Now you have to do this for the entire thing that you're, uh, that you're creating. Now there is an upside to this. We don't need all of this because this weapon has four of the same sides and even one side, even one side has like this, but if you would flip the template, it's this. So once you've all unfolded it, it will look something like this. Now that looks nothing like it, of course, if you look at it just from the templates, but bear with me, it's all we need. And I'll give you the rundown. It's, for example, this piece that we just unfolded is that one, the red one here. And we only need one and then trace it on foam four times because it's one, and two, three, and four, and then you flip over the template and make that one, one, two, three, and four. And that way you save paper and you won't have to cut as much templates, just reuse the template you have. Same goes for the inside here. Just again, cut it out four times, flip it over and cut it again out four times on, on, on your foam. Same with this one. It's the, the piece that goes in between it. You need it four times, one, two, three, four, and you're done all from the same template. So that saves you a lot. And if I select all of this, you can see that it's the main core. It's like this inner piece right here and you need it four times as it as it's a circular pattern of four and then this main circle thingy right here uh, the handle itself is going to be pvc tubing and then this bottom piece right here is like an end stop and we'll shove that over your pvc tubing now it's just a matter of this is your a4 paper if you're uh if you don't have a4 but you guys use letter then here you have paper size and you can just change it if you have an a3 printer you can even use that giant custom it's all possible but we're using a4 so we're leaving it on a4 then using the translate function you just have to grab all those templates and get them inside the lines now if it's like Tilt it like this, you can right click and rotate, click once and you have the line, click and hold again, and then you can just straighten and rotate that around. Same for this one, and this one goes 
here. And this is still fine if it's covering two pages. You can just cut it out and, and use some sticky tape to, uh, to reattach it. If you don't want to do that, then it's again the joint and cut and just separate, translate, move it around a bit. This one, rotate, click, click and hold, rotate it a bit, back to translate, and it fits on the same piece of paper. And then you do this for all of this until it fits nice and perfect. Now that's only 10 pages of template. And I didn't even do it very well. I just kind of shoved it all together and crammed it in there. And from here, you can just, of course, save your work and then start printing them out. So from there, it's printed out, cut it out, and we can trace that. We'll do that next episode. There's one more feature if you already uh, are more experienced. <laughs> And if you have a Silhouette Cameo device like I do, this software also supports it. If you don't know what sil Silhouette Cameo is, it's basically a cutting machine. Uh, you can load this sheet in there, load it with some paper, and a small little knife will just go across all the lines and cut out the templates for you. Uh, if you are the proud owner of such a device, you go to File, and you go to export the unfold and then DXF per page. And if you save it, it will make 10 files, one to 10 in a DXF format, which you can load into Silhouette Studio. And if you're already familiar with it, you can take it from there and you already know it and you can let it cut out for you. So I gave you the rundown on the flail, but just to show you again, I'll move the the thing here, you know what, we'll just make it so that the avatar is holding it. There's a pretty cool feature as well. If I load in, let's say a boot file and I attach it here, let's, uh, let's size that up. And let's say you have this boot right here. You only need this side and of course, uh, flip it, but if you want to see it just as a, as a visual aid, you can select the model and you go here to mirror part and you check that and it will duplicate it and there you have both boots. And you can do that for the weapon as well. And now you're dual wielding. Just a nice feature just to have some general aesthetic look and, and, and feel to it. So that's it for the first episode. I don't want to make it too long. I still have uh, a lot of prep work to do for Comic-Con Stuttgart. Um, just if you use it, save often because sometimes you'll hit a bug, it can crash and you might lose some work. That's the downside of it being a beta. It's still in development. Randy, I know he is working hard on it. And if you have a bug that you can't seem to get around, post it in their Facebook group and it will get fixed or at the very least you'll get some help with it it's still pretty cheap it's 25 dollars for a cosplay uh, software that you can use indefinitely and it's well worth the money i'll be using uh, armorsmith for the entire series uh, i'll uh, give a rundown uh, a quick rundown because i showed you most of of armorsmith now uh, but as we progress through every armor piece and there is a change in in way that i work i will go back to the software and show you as for the next one i will continue with the flail and finish that one first so thank you so much for watching again and i'll see you in the next episode Thanks again for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. If you learned something from the video, please share this within your cosplay groups to also help your fellow cosplayer. We also have a Ko-fi account. Please consider donating a coffee. This helps support and grow the channel. Link in the description. Thank you so much.